Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John Magi, and I'll be your host. And this week, we have a very special guest. Kathleen Bobbitt joins us to talk about her interesting perspective on traveling as a grandparent solo with her grandchildren. Joined at the panel, joined by my, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, joined by uh, my panel of experts this week, we have agent consultant Tracy Heinrichs. Hi, everyone. We have client services manager for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Kevin Close. Hello. We have executive assistant, Kathleen Bobbitt. Hello. And back in the production facility, here all by himself, we have our producer, Craig Williams. Hi. Excellent. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for uh, listening and watching at home. Um, since we started the show, one of the things I wanted to do was try to bring on different perspectives of folks who travel. Um, a couple weeks ago, we talked to Heather, who has travels as a single traveler, and I always thought that Kathleen had a very unique perspective on how she travels. Um, she travels with her two grandkids, and she usually goes by herself with them, which which um, has some interesting challenges with it, but also I think is a benefit to all of them traveling together. Um, I know Kathleen's grandkids pretty well, and when I talk to them, they seem to really enjoy um, their solo trips with grandma. So first of all, thank you for joining us, Kathleen. Thank you. Um, give us a little bit of background about your grandkids. What are their names, their ages? Okay, Chloe is the oldest, and this year she'll be turning 14. When we first started traveling and doing a cruise, she was only 10. So we've had like three or four years of it now. Gavin is um, going to be turning 13, so now they're both teenagers. And um, when he first started, of course, he was nine. What kind of trips have you taken with them? Well, we've done road trips, but we've also done the cruises. And I got to tell you, I think the cruises are the better choice because when you're doing a road trip, you've got to worry about everything. Car, where you're going, where you're going to stay, where you're going to eat. And nobody ever wants to eat at the same time on a road trip. Nobody wants to eat all at the same time when we're home alone. <laughs> That's true. That's Something true. Something different. Um, before we get into the actual trips and the things that you've done with your, your grandkids, I want to talk a little bit about some of the challenges you face because um, we get this a lot. I'm a grandparent. I want to take the grandkids without the parents going. There's a little bit of an extra bit of work you have to do ahead of time, some paperwork you have to fill out, and things you just want to be aware of. So what were some of the things you had to do to make sure the kids could get on the cruise with you when I was on going on the cruises um, you went online and they gave you pretty much everything you needed but what you have to look out for because these are not your children you can't leave the country with them so you have to have par parental consent so I had to have a special form that I downloaded and filled out and let me tell you the best thing to do is to prepare every piece of paperwork you can in advance um, take it down there. They're going to ask you for it. Mom and dad does have to say it's okay for them to leave the country with you. And you have to, it is, I don't think I notarized it, but I know I had to have it completely right. signed by them. Yeah. And both cruise lines will have a minor authorization form, they call it. And so, you know, that gets filled out. It gets signed by both parents. And then it gives you, it gives you permission to take them out of the country and also permission to act as their guardian. So in medical emergencies, you know, if something, you know, was to go awry on the cruise itself, it kind of gives you the authority to be the voice for them. It's, it's understandable. The cruise yeah. line wants to be covered. They want to make sure they have the right people That's right. taking kids out yeah. of the country. And I it don't should also be said that it can also be a case of, like, I traveled as a single mom a lot with my son. And so even though I was his parent, I still needed a similar authorization for him in some cases from his dad. So not necessarily the cruise line itself wanted it. They just needed to have a guardian, but taking him out of the country. So, for example, if I was flying from Canada into the U.S., you know, they would want something from, you know, the other parent to say that you have the ability to do that. If the other parent isn't in the picture, usually there's documentation to prove that. I would have as much information with you as you can. Um, and it's not to say you'll be asked all the time. Because I can tell you, you know, all the years I traveled with my son, I could probably count on one hand how many times I was asked. But the fact that I had it, 
and when I was asked, was most important. So documentation is important. Right. You never want to be caught without it. So right, have everything exactly. ahead of time. Have it all um, set and ready to go. I know that recently you just got the kids' passports as I opposed did. to bringing the birth certificate. I did because the last time we went on a cruise, uh, Gavin became ill. It was called a, a junk food overload. <laughs> and I thought, well, what oh, am I going to I got that Saturday to- night. Yeah, yeah that's everything. Caught that same thing. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Uh, anyway, he had gotten sick, and I kept thinking, if he was really ill, I cannot fly him home with right. just a birth certificate, which is the way we were traveling with the original birth certificates, and it has to be original. So um, I thought, what am I going to do? And this was pretty early on in the cruise, so I had to really think about this. Fortunately, he got up the next morning. He was just fine. But the thing, it made me start thinking about, now the kids, you know, that they have a passport, they're way cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you get those just, stamps. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're just way cool now, where before yeah. they were just ordinary. <laughs> right. But yeah, they, um, it was a good thing. And I, I did it solely because I want to have the option. Right. Yeah. And let me talk about a little bit about kind of the fact side of that. So what happens is when you're when you're cruising, if it is a closed loop cruise. So what that means is that it's leaving and de- or it's departing and arriving back to the same US port. In that situation, a passport is not mandatory for US citizens. So what that means is that you can travel as Kathleen said with an original copy of the birth certificate Adults would also, in addition to that, need to have a government-issued photo ID that is valid. An expired driver's license isn't going to work. Um, so that's the minimum requirements. But as that Kathleen said, you know, we were on a cruise with somebody got sick. Remember that? Mm-hmm. And had to stay in the Bahamas. Right. And then we all thought of that. You know, that was our first question. He has a passport, right? Because you don't think, nobody likes to think about what can happen if something goes wrong. Right. And I think in Kathleen's case, luckily it was, you know, it was a, a pizza bug. Right. <laughs> I think but. it's been extended, but aren't um, aren't the laws regarding passports and licenses going to change eventually? We actually talked yeah, about that we, in one of our Q&A We did. Shows. There's, yeah. It's a very, I don't want to, I don't want to answer that specifically because there's a lot of intricates to it right but there are going to be some changes coming to that as well i can't speak to the yeah so i I don't want to either but but eventually a passport's going to be mandatory yeah so you really if you're traveling you're planning on cruising when you think about the expense of the trip in general um the peace of mind that a passport gives you i think is worth its value and you I also think. could, if you think about spreading the, you, I know you have to pay for it all at once, but then it's good for, yeah. for adults, it's 10 years. Right. You know? And for children, I forget what the age is, but I think it's five I years. I think it's five years I think it well. is five years. But yeah. however, when they go to apply for their passports, both parents have to go. Yes, they do. Not just one. They just can't fill out the paperwork right. and drop it off type yeah. deal. It's a big deal getting yeah. a passport. There's a lot involved. So you want to make sure that you're talking to your local passport office about exactly what is required to get that passport to, because it's a long process when you get there it can be a wait so you want to make sure you've got all your ducks in a row before you arrive and you do have to have your original birth certificate then too it was very hard for me to release my birth certificate to get my first passport Mm -hmm. and by the way renewing your passport's easier much easier Uh, so that's a very good point Uh, Kathleen mentioned the fact that if she traveled when she traveled with the grandkids before they had a bless you back there before they had a passport she had to bring their original birth certificates with them and you know Kathleen's very responsible, and I'm sure she took care of it. But that's a stressful situation. What if something happens to this? What if I accidentally yeah. lose it? You know, this is an important document. Get a passport. Much easier. We talked yeah. about it on our Q and A show a couple of weeks ago. It's absolutely worth it to have a passport. I agree, and that way I don't have any worries about anything. And trust me, when you're traveling with two children, yep. you're constantly, especially when you're out of the mom loop, <laughs> and then I go back and I try to be the parent, so to speak, it's hard to remember everything. I get to the car and realize somebody doesn't have a pair of shoes on, and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> right. You know? right. It's like, how did my kids make it? I like, know. Well, how did I do I know, this? I know, it's true. It's just too much stress. <laughs> That's actually a really good point. Let's talk a little bit about that. What is your mindset when you travel with just the kids? Are you really nervous, or do you have sort of this idea that grandma maybe have, has a little more gravitas than the parents, so they'll listen to you more? I think that is true. Uh, First off, my grandchildren and I, we travel very well together. We always have. But um, I put up with a little bit of the, you know, you're touching me, you're looking at me, or you're breathing, and... And so then That's I just say, Kevin. <laughs> then I say, no, no, you know, let's go back to your grandchildren and stop talking about John and Kevin. <laughs> okay. 
And then I say, <laughs> then I just say, you know, okay, um, this is my first time telling you this, but I'm not going to put up with this all trip long. And then when it gets to number two, number three means I explode. So then they kind of know that. And they're going to get fussed at. But for the most part, we never make it to three. I'll tell them once or twice, and then that's about it. But, you know, today's kids, for what, a whole hour for them not to be on an electronic something? Right. So that's a long time for them, you know? Mm-hmm. So th- that's I also something. think that your kids, grandkids, have realized how lucky they are to be able to get to do this with you. That's true. They seem very appreciative of what they get. So I think that's really, they've they've got the bug. They've got the travel bug. We know them personally, and they're very actually very well behaved children. They are. They're like Campbell's kids. They really are. <laughs> um, talk a little bit about. You just touched on something with the electronics. Um, is that something that you experience with the kids? Do they want to be on their phones and stuff when you're trying to uh, enjoy something like, you know, a beautiful Caribbean cruise or a show or a meal i don't know how other people's children are but these two every waking moment Mm -hmm. now when we're driving to the port i don't have a problem with them being on their things but and then there's certain times i set aside for that but for the most part you're not going to be in the caribbean on a on a game you're going to be with the family and you're going to have fun now they don't always have to be with me but and by in i insist on dinner with them without electronics as well so they can go and they can do whatever they want on the ship certain times. And then at the end of the day, they'll have dinner with me. We'll find out how things go. How many Disney Cruise Line trips have they been on with you? They have been on a total of three, two back to back. And then we went on a couple of Royals and then one more Disney. Back to back, you mean one year and then the next year? Yeah, Not two back years. to back cruises. People, right, use that, I'm sorry, right. people use that phrase differently. Okay, yes. We did uh, the first year we did a Disney, it was five days. And I thought, let me see, you know, test the waters. The next one was a seven day, and it was Disney again. The first trip, they were like, you know, leave me alone, take a step back. You're going to be okay. Nothing bad's going to happen to you. The second year we went on to a Disney cruise ship, my grandchildren said, I'll meet you back here in seven days. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. Yes, but at that point they were they were experts then. Yeah, you know, they're cool and they're experts. Right. So do you find uh, taking them on the cruise as opposed to the road trip, it sounds like it also gives you a break too. Tremendously. So you get some alone time. I do. To relax. I do. And they get some alone time, but then you get that valuable together time. Exactly. Well, right. the first cruise we did, there wasn't too much separation. We were kind of all five days together. And I think that's just because they were learning the ropes. I was learning the right. ropes. And, you know, even though at the time they were nine and ten years old, they were pretty you know, older children. They didn't like the kid club on Disney ship, so they wanted to hang out with me. So, uh, you know, I had to behave <laughs> and I let them go a few places, but I was still like, I don't know, can they do this? And but now I I would not hesitate. Can I tell you, with Ben taking him a number of years on Disney, it was funny how with the kids clubs, there'd be a trip where it just wasn't for him, and he would get that feel or that vibe early on, and he would hang out with us. And then there'd be a trip where we didn't see him the whole time. Right. I think that depends on who else is in the club. I think so, and I think that's exactly what it was. You just kind of get a feel for who's there and, and the dynamics of the group. And uh, so that's interesting how you saw that with your grandkids, too. Well, the second time we went on Disney, they did not go to the kids' club even then, but they hung out together. Mm. And they knew then where to go on the ship, you know, live in the arcade, the pool, those places. I know exactly where to find them. So I tried to give them a little bit of freedom. But then we did our uh, first, uh, we went off the ship. We didn't actually do an excursion Mm -hmm. on the second cruise. The first one we didn't. We just went off, shopped. That kind of thing came back. It was only a short trip, but the second one, we just went shopping, and um, we went to, I think we were in Puerto Rico, and we went to the fort, and I did that on my own. I'll never do that again. I think that these cruises with an excursion, if you're going to leave the ship, that's the way to go, because then you're not having to worry about it, and you're not worrying about transportation, then you're back to the same worries. You're also, with an excursion, if your excursion is late and it's run through the ship, the ship waits for you. Right. If you're on an excursion of your own and the bus breaks down, there's a possibility the ship's leaving without you. When you say you did an excursion on your own, you meant you booked it outside of the shore excursion. We walked out. We got a taxi. We went to the fort. Gotcha. And then when we came back out, there were buses and taxis, but it was hard to get one. And then I kept thinking, we kind of waited late. 
And now I'm I'm way too far. I'm not even sure where the boat is. So or ship is, sorry. Ship. And so See the water, Kathleen? <laughs> no. Yeah, towards the not water. from the fort <laughs> unless I go to swim. But um, so we we finally got a taxi and went back to the ship. And I just thought, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. That was just too much. I think we have to uh, insert here that a lot of what we're talking about really depends on your children. Oh, absolutely. On your absolutely. children sure. and grandchildren. Yes. I keep trying to say over and over again, we know these, these kids right. personally. We know how they are, their personalities. So we can speak to that. But every kid is different for sure. Um, tell me a little bit about the experience of actually leaving the ship with the kids. Were you nervous? Was this like, oh, my gosh, I have to really protect them or did you feel like they would be okay getting off at a foreign port i don't think that i was ever nervous about them because they're not gonna they're gonna hang out to the point where they're gonna look for me as much as i'm looking for them and grandma has the money and much right that the buck stops here <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's a good point but no and besides my grandchildren are the type even if we're on ship and i'm like at the pool and they're scurrying around doing whatever about every hour they'll pop up are you okay do you need anything mm-hmm. and i'll say no or yes and off she they hides go. her wine glass <laughs> that's right You're these are fine. the things i want you to get stop <laughs> talking to me young gentleman caller my grandchildren are coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. what was their first reaction to the disney cruise line now these are florida kids right. they live in florida right. not too far from the theme parks um, what was it like for them to first walk on the Disney Cruise Line ship? Because you had been on before them. Right. They were elated, actually. A little intimidated because, you know, they'd never been on a ship. But um, at first, they were just so excited. In fact, um, Chloe, who's extremely shy, was walking down the plank, getting onto the ship. And you know how they stop and they say your family's name? And so we stopped, and the lady said, what's your name? And Chloe just shouts out, we're on a cruise! <laughs> Okay, let's one more step. We're All one right. more step away from being on a cruise. Let's give them the name. So I gave them the name. And I'm not being kidnapped. This is right. not what you want to <laughs> yell out. I know, right? But she just shouts that out. We're like, okay, this is great. This cruise. is cool. And so um, what they loved, I'll tell you the truth, though. Chloe, to this day, still loves a Disney cruise awesome. over a Royal. I'm not trying to say preference here, but she does. Gavin, on the other hand, thinks the Royal offers more for his age group at this time. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's a great segue into really what I want to point out, too, is let's talk about their feelings before these cruises and what they like on each cruise, Disney Cruise Line versus Royal Caribbean, because we find that there's things we like on each cruise differently. So I always say if I could take the two and just sort of jam them together, the best of I both. could make a perfect cruise. Right. What is it that Chloe really likes about Disney Cruise Line? I think, first off, Chloe feels, um, not that she feels endangered, but she feels a little bit safer on a, a Disney cruise. She knows that everything that she can just walk up to any staff member, member or crew member, and she sees plenty of them, that she can get help. And I think that means a lot to her. Then she just likes the, the ship itself. She thinks the ship offers a lot more for her. She loves the theater part. Mm-hmm. She likes to see the characters. She doesn't mm-hmm. go up. and God knows she would have to speak to them. But she doesn't go up to them. But she likes seeing them. So she likes the Disney itself. From a distance? And then, yeah, I see from a distance. As I say, and then the animator's palette. That's one of her favorites. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's how I like to see Craig from a distance. I don't like to go up to him for sure. And then what is uh, Gavin like about Royal Caribbean? He likes the activities. He likes that rock climbing. He likes that uh, surf rider. Is that what it's called? Flow rider. Flow rider. Yeah. Flow rider. Okay, he likes to get on it. And then by the end of it, he's on, he can stand up. It's not pretty, but he does stand up. <laughs> and But in the beginning, it's just like I'm too scared to even move. I just hang on for dear life until the water sucks me down. There does seem to be a lot on a Royal Caribbean ship for Gavin's age. Right. Well, There's the, a sports court. Right. So say, then he goes up and he always gets in a basketball game with some kids. And, and uh, to him, he likes the pools better. Now, I also would say that Gavin is a very outgoing young man yes. and very, very friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, could, he could start a conversation with a wall. True. So he's one of those kids who's quite willing to join the fray. He's also a, a sports kid. Right. He likes all kinds of sports, so getting involved. In, and Royal Caribbean has more of that, I mm-hmm. think, for boys. I think for a, a boy Gavin's age, that do, it does offer more. Well, the first thing, too, was the first time we went on Royal Caribbean, the kids' club, they were going to venture out and see what that was like. And Chloe was in one. He was located in another. Now, as a parental person, I want them to stay together. 
To me, there's a little safety there. And um, so they decided they would do certain things, maybe, like one or two items. Like Chloe, I think, did some kind of a contest. So she went that day by herself. But Galveston hung around. And then they went to arcades together, and they did their own thing. For the very first trip there, they did their own thing, and they, you know, liked that part of it. But now the next time they did try the kids' club because they were both together, and they liked that as well. I talked about when I one of the things that completely hooked me on Disney World is when I first started coming here, my brother and I were allowed to venture into the Magic Kingdom on our own. Because my mom trusted she would stay by the pool at the hotel, but she trusted that we were going to be safe. And I think at that age, the the idea of autonomy is extraordinarily intoxicating. You're on your own. You're making your own decisions. And I think within the confines of a cruise ship, I think that's kind of awesome. So I think that's probably a lot of what your grandkids love about going with you because... There's safety that you're there, but they get to be, Free. they get to try themselves on for the first time. Yeah, there's a little bit of freedom there on themselves. Right. Right. I agree with that. Now, they have taken a trip with you and your daughter right. on a cruise. And what was the dynamic like for that? How different was it for traveling with them alone and having your daughter on the cruise as well? Okay, I'm going to try to put this politely. They hated it. <laughs> Don't sugarcoat it. Yeah, yeah, uh, really. Jennifer was fun, but Jennifer is still mom, mm-hmm. and I'm not. Yep. And so when we do things that's fun, we laugh. We, if it falls apart, we just think that's funny, you know, that kind of thing where mom is, we've got to go from here. Mom is an anal person. We've got to get off the ship. We have to do this. We have to do that. We have to do this. We cannot sit for five minutes. For me, I'm okay with Jennifer sitting. has a schedule. Yeah, she's got an agenda. <laughs> And it's got to be met. And the kids are like, no, that's not what we go on vacation for. And kids behave differently when their parents are around. Mm-hmm. Like, we travel with my niece. And when we take her just us, it's a totally, totally different situation. You know, she's well-behaved. We have fun together. As soon as my sister is involved, it changes the dynamic. So, I used to teach kindergarten. Yeah. And parents and children together... Mm -hmm. have a very, very different Mm -hmm. dynamic. The parent walks out of the room and all of a sudden the child's an entirely different child. And they're like, how did you handle him today? He was such a monster. This morning it's like, he was a monster for you. Right, right, right. And I think that's the difference. And I notice when I travel with my niece without, and I'm sure you find the same thing with your grandkids, it's just a different dynamic. They behave differently. You're not on edge because now you are the voice. Right. You know, you're not stepping on toes. Right, with you know, parent, to be, right. you know, the voice of authority. So I think there's something to be said for that and kids grandparent, that kids grandchild. Like, Absolutely. Grandma doesn't make me do that. <laughs> so why should I have to do it for you? We're on our But cruise. I also think you're different around her because you don't want to overstep your bounds. So you probably come across to her as cool a little aunt. less strict. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's a very different dynamic. And it's very different, too, when you can just have fun with them. Right. Because I've got her, like when we took her to Alani, I had her for, you know, 14, 13, 14 days. And then she went home. I don't have to worry about the day-to-day worries of her. I don't have to worry about how she's getting to college and university. <laughs> she's I get sticky to just have... and her clothes are dirty here. She's yours. Yeah, I get to just have fun she's with her. University. So <laughs> my level of responsibility is different, too. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And speaking of that, that's another thing that I did um, for the grandchildren. I didn't want to get to the ship and find out that they have packed one pair of underwear, you know. Right. So I sent them a list. Mm-hmm. Make sure you have a dress for, you know, the dress up night. Make sure you have yep. something besides flip flops because, you know, we're from Florida. We live in sandals and flip flops for us to really put on real shoes. <laughs> I just would like to insert here that not everyone in Florida lives in sandals and flip flops. I do. Yeah, I live we're in not sandals all and flip flops. Barefoot and backwards. <laughs> Oh, ooh. that's not <laughs> nice. I do the same thing for my sister, though. I give her, not only does she get the packing list, I have her bring the stuff over a couple days early so I can investigate and make sure oh, her shorts man, are matching the shirt. Oh, just don't make sure. I didn't do that. I packed for John one time. And we got to our destination. Our first cruise ever together. Our first cruise. And John said, I can't find underwear. And I thought, oh. I don't think you're going to find him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like they sell big and tall men underwear in the gift shop. Okay? <laughs> um, so we've now realized that we are each responsible for our own clothing. It might all go in the same suitcase, but we're responsible for our own. <laughs> well, they do their list. They pack their bag. And then um, 
I have Jennifer review the list because the last thing I'm going to do is wash something in a sink and hang it up and, you know, on a cruise. Let's just don't go there because I'm not there for housework. (laughs) (laughs) What are, what are other pre-cruise things that you do with them? What are some of the things you might say to them ahead of time or work with them ahead of time to get ready for a cruise? I don't think that other than the the packing, which is one of the things too, is they have to bring me things to bring on. This is a, well, let me digress just for a sec. The very first cruise I went on, both of all three of us, let me rephrase, had a suitcase and I just had my handbag and we went on the ship. Well, when you get on the ship, there's things to do. And I didn't have any bathing suits. I didn't have anything else. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that wasn't really smart on my part, but live and learn. So now they bring me a things to go into that one case right. and we roll that one case on yes. with us. I just want to go on record as saying she does work for a travel agency. She does work for the owner of an agency who probably should have told her this ahead of time. <laughs> well, we might have told her and she just ignored it. No, us. I'm pretty sure I forgot to tell her. <laughs> oh, fine. Don't worry about anything. Yeah. Just get on the ship there and are, enjoy they, it. I think this but is a very good point. something we Getting tell our clients ship. quite a bit. Right. Yeah, because it will be several hours before you see your bags. Right. right. So, you know, bring on that carry-on because as soon as the kids see the pool, that's where they're going to want to be. They're going to be wanting to do something. Yeah. So what we did was we just explored the ship that day. Right. And it kind of worked out for us. But the, the thing is now I would not board without them having. And even an outfit for dinner. Mm-hmm. Because that way if it comes late. And it has come late for us. It has for us too. So, um, so yep. So that you're ready. Yeah. Medication. Your camera. Your valuables should be with you. They shouldn't be in your suitcase, but you're right. The first day's activities need to be there. And that includes the whole thing. That includes if you need swim shoes or things like that. And it's usually around 1.30-ish when you get into your room. So it's not like you have to carry this stuff in this bag around with you all day long. Right. So, you know, you have it with you for the first hour or two that you're on the ship. And then you can go to your room and you can change into suits or kind of unload that bag. So... It's a, it's right, a really good tip. They've already, in their minds, decided what they're going to take. Absolutely. Also, um, the day you get on the ship is usually very hectic. Yeah. It usually starts earlier. There's a process to getting on the ship. So letting your kids put on their bathing suits and blow off some steam before dinner is a great way to spend the afternoon. I agree. Are your kids picky eaters? Do you have trouble getting mm, them to eat? No. Uh, well, Gavin is kind of like the same basic stuff. I have to try to force him to come off of the pizza, the chicken nuggets, the hot dogs, hamburgers. Chloe will try anything. And so she, she's very adventurous. So a cruise is a great True. place to do that. As right. I say, that that's yeah. a great thing about a cruise is that you know Gavin can go to pizza whenever he wants, but Chloe can have something fancy with right. that too. And Gavin can try something else knowing that if he doesn't like it, there's still a pizza to be had. Right. Well the thing too is that they go in with the eyes idea of I'm gonna give this a try and it's okay. Right. If I don't eat it. That's completely different Which, than you signing a bill at the end of it, right? To right. say that you've paid for a meal. Or that you've cooked it at home. Right. And that mom says, you know, I've, I've made this. This is what you're eating tonight. End of story. That's well, right. on a cruise, if you pick something up and you don't like it, and just set it to the side and go get whatever you do want. Yeah. So that's a lot of choices there for them. That option doesn't stop at children, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Again, stop talking about John and Kevin. We're concentrating <laughs> on your grandchildren. <laughs> You've got a cruise coming up in July, June of this year? End of June, 1st of July. Royal Caribbean cruise? It is. Excellent. And which ship is it? it. Um, I think it's the Freedom. Freedom out of Port Canaveral. Right. The Freedom is actually my favorite ship. Right. They've been on the Freedom several times and said this is not going to be anything as far as shocking to them. So they're going to be very comfortable. One of the best parts about living in Central Florida is that we are less than an hour from the port. True. So it's and often, you know, Florida resident discounts, or you just have that ability sometimes even just to do last minute, which is nice when you live in Florida. Anything we didn't cover that you thought was important to talk about? Um, my suggestion, because one of the things that I try to look for when I'm traveling with my two grandchildren, and not to be mean or anything, but I do want some alone time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have grandfather with me, right. so I don't get a break normally unless they're going to go do something i would suggest to any parent or grandparent of younger children disney is the way to go for them because disney is looking to take care of your younger children and if you need that break you have an opportunity to let them go do it safely and you can have peace of mind the whole way Uh, for my teenage 
kids now. We go to the Royal Caribbean. I'm still comfortable because they've gone so many times that they know what they're doing. But um, for that part is try to prepare yourself as much as you can in advance. It just makes the whole process go so much smoother. The worst feeling in the world is to get to the port and they say, where's your parental consent? And you're like, oh, I forgot it. They're not, you're not going anywhere. Right. You're just not going to go. So try to remember everything and bring it to the port. Because my thing is, have too much, then you just put it away. That's right. But you can't create something you don't have. So that would be my advice to any grandparent. Make sure you take some time for yourself, and you can do this with the kids' clubs. Or if they're old enough, like my two, they can go off for a little bit. And um, and just be as prepared as you can. If you're traveling for and you go to a port and you do want to get off and go do something, use those excursions because, again, they give you that peace of mind. I would also suggest you talked about packing, that teenagers tend to be a little more minimalist no drama uh, if something's missing right. so you need to go over that checklist several times if there's a certain beauty product that your teenage girl needs you make sure that that's in there because chances are you might not be able to find it on the ship that's true too now a lot of times now when you're traveling and you need something and you're in port those stores are not open to you not the ones on ship right so when you're in port the ship stores are not open so if you find you needed something that morning you're not getting it until you get off that ship. Hopefully you can get off the ship <laughs> <laughs> without it, you know? <laughs> so hopefully. But that Excellent. would be my suggestions to any grandparents is just to make sure that, you know, for me, I totally enjoy it. The kids enjoy it. I enjoy it. We look forward to this every year. And we've, we've traveled with your grandchildren before, and we find them charming and lovely and fun to be around. And along the same lines as a single parent, it was the same thing for me. Um, I liked cruising you know, I liked cruising with Ben. I felt like, you know, like you said, I had that alone time, but yet we had the together time, and it was a good balance. Well, John and I got to be grandparents on a ship one day. We were traveling with your uh, Ben was there and Roger and Kathy's grandkids, mm-hmm. and we took everybody for sushi. And at the end of the cruise... We were grandparents. We were the cool uncles. Uh, we were the cool wow. uncles. But Careful. Was, we were in the same... <laughs> but Because it was one of the best meals. We, we enjoyed it so much. So it's fun to travel with kids when they're relaxed and having a good time. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you, Kathleen, for joining us. We really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you guys here for helping me move that conversation along. I appreciate that as well. Uh, We like to end each show each week with what we are calling our agent spotlight. We like to highlight one of our dreams unlimited travel agents who can't be here in the studio with us. And this week we have Jana Kazmierzak. Jana was actually here a couple weeks ago. She did the Sandals and Beaches uh, show with us and uh, she did a very excellent job with that. Jana lives in Northeast Florida near Jacksonville. She's married to her best friend, Brian, for 18 wonderful years, and they have two sons, Brandon, age 13, and Bryce, age 10. She is a self-described soccer mom, baseball mom, football mom, and she's active in her church's youth group. Jen has been working in the travel industry for 18 years and has worked on-site at corporations doing business travel. She's planned many vacations, honeymoons, and destination weddings for her clients. Jenna loves planning weddings and Because of this, she specializes in honeymoons, destination weddings, and cruises. Um, Yeah, Jenna's definitely one of our go-to folks for the honeymoon wedding stuff. So if you're interested in that, you can contact Jana, J-A-N-A, at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Again, thank you, panel, for being on the show and for uh, uh, speaking with us this week. Kathleen, thank you for joining us as our special guest. My pleasure. Thank you, everybody at home, for listening and watching the show. And we hope you have a great week. We hope you have a great vacation. (laughs) 